How's it going my friends and welcome back to another video. I know it has been a minute but we are finally back. Today we're going to be looking at this Almont Rekey. Now I wasn't able to find too much information on it as, as far as like a date of when it was manufactured or anything like that. I did find that they usually go between uh, 20 to 40 bucks on eBay but I actually came across this one um, on my little nature trail by our work and it was pretty scuffed up and scratched so I went ahead and I cleaned it already and I started looking online and I was like oh well I don't doesn't have a key it'd be cool if it had a key and I noticed that it had this little hole here so I started looking online and I was like oh what is this hole used for and apparently you can go ahead and rekey these if you have a special tool well me being the crafty person I am I went ahead and tried to make a tool and apparently my tool wasn't up to snuff and when I went to rekey it the whole lock came apart come on come out there we go yeah so the whole lock came apart so now I get the joy of putting this thing back together but it's actually not too bad of a, a situation because I looked online and most of the successful videos of this lock are people who have had actual functioning tools and I haven't seen anybody actually put this fully assembled back together. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So the first thing we're gonna be doing, um, I went ahead and I saved the pins. We're gonna be um, cutting our key. Now I went ahead and I went to the store and I got two keys already. Um, I got some pretty nice bidding on it. So the way this works is you have one key, which is the operating key. And this goes into the lock. Let me go shove this back in there. Put that there. So this goes in the lock. And you can see that hole only turns to about the 11 o'clock position. If I take this key out, I can actually, oops, I can actually get this to go to the 12 o'clock position. And that's what allows this core to come out. Now what's happening is, I don't know if you can see in this this housing, you see the little nub in the housing right there. That nub follows along this channel. And when the key, the operating key is inserted, you can see that it's blocking the access to that channel. When, it, when you have a, a gut key, which we are going to make, it'll go into this channel and then you can pull it out and drop the core out. So what we need to do to make this gut key so we need to insert this. And we're going to take this Sharpie and mark where we need to cut on this key because we don't want it to block this channel. So we need to cut it to at least right here. And we're going to cut it to this wording right here. So we want to grind this down to uh, if I can draw or if I crap. So imagine it's a straight line going there. So let's go ahead and clamp this in our vise over here. And we are going to take these diamond files. We'll probably use a flat one we don't really need Well, it's definitely deep enough. I don't know if we need to make that ledge a little bit more. Let's just do that as a precaution. Mm -hmm. 
We can always clean this up later too. We'll just need a functioning key. I think that will be good enough for what we need to do though. Let's see. Uh, that might actually block us right there. Let's file it down just a little bit more on this nose. out of here there we go there we go okay where's our core there's our core let's check it again that should be perfect bidding is still there so let's go ahead and throw this in the core here and see if our key can turn it. There we go, all the way to 12 o'clock. So now we have a working gut key. So step one is done. Step two now, now we got to figure out what pins need to go in this core. Now, <clears throat> this did have steel pins in here, which you can see here. And I do would like to reuse some of these if possible because it gives it drill resistance. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. That's not gonna work. That is. Eh, I don't think that's the right one either. Maybe it is. So, looks like most of these might be too. Yeah, that's all. Well, that might actually be the right size right there. The one way, the best way to figure this out is to. key. I want the other key. And we want Why is that not letting me? What's going on right there? Oh, I have it backwards, that's why. Okay. Come on. Yeah, I think that's not the right size pin. So, unfortunately, I don't believe we're going to be able to reuse some of these pins. So, let's go ahead and go into here. And see what pins we can use. Where is my core? There. All right. Pin one. That's too high. That looks good. I believe these are the same for this. Oh, come on. No, it's not. So I could look at the key. P 
pin one, pin two, pin three. Okay. Pin two. Pin two looks like it needs to be a little bit deeper. There's pin two. And then pin three is a short one. Probably this one. Uh, no, I think that is not the right one. That looks like it's too big. Must be this one. All right, and then pin four is a low cut. Looks like it might be right. Four, maybe not. And then pin five is not that one. I think it should be good. So now we should be able to uh, go in here. He works is just a little bit sticky, I think. And I think that's because this is not a perfect fit for. And this one works better. All right, so we got our bidding for this. So this is when part is done. So let's set this to the side. And now we get to do the fun part. Let's go ahead and cut the video. We're gonna get this portion in the vise. I'm gonna show you how to pin this. And this is the portion that uh, I wanted to show you guys at the beginning of the video. Okay, so I went ahead and I put this lock in the vise and I situated it as best as I could with the light to show you what's going on because this is the important part of how to fix this. I don't, I don't know if you can see in the very, very back of this lock, there's a little nub back there. So essentially what you want to do is you want to take this, the ideal way is to take this tool like this and you're basically using it like a, a pinning shoe. If I can get it in the hole. Easier said than done. All right, so we're in the hole now. So you can see in an ideal in an ideal world, um, when you take that core out, this would hold all those pins in, but it didn't. So what we got to do is we need to take that over to the side here and essentially what we're going to do uh, if I can is 
So if you can see, when we move this, we're gonna slowly cover up those uh, light, work with me. Oh, there we go, that's better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially slowly cover over those holes to keep those pins down. Now, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna try to get the best light that I can. I can see it, but hopefully that you guys can see it. Nah, that's not gonna work. Oh, there's that, but I think that's as good as we're gonna get for now. All right, so let's put the first spring in. spring is in there and let's take our first Bible pen and throw it in there the room to work in this is not very much all right so you can see we got the first one in there Second spring. Second pin. Third spring. You don't need to rush this, you wanna take your time because this is going to be annoying if you have to redo it multiple times. All right. Fourth. Most people get in trouble. It's getting this last one in. Oh. That's what you don't want, but thankfully I was able to save it. And these are starting to pop up. There we go. Crisis averted. So we got this over this, and now this is the hardest part. It's rotating this bottom portion back over without dropping these pins that you just put in. Actually, you know what? I may just do this. Well, no, because we gotta get that ball bearing in there, so that's not gonna work. And I just dropped those pins out. <sighs> okay. We are officially at the halfway mark, believe it or not. And I gotta re-pin this lock because I accidentally dropped these pins out, so. Bear with me for one quick second. Okay, pins are back in the, the core. 
All right, so now what we got to do, it's got to very carefully flip this upside down because we need to put that ball bearing in. Oops. And my help you have the shackle in first, I forgot. So spring in this back area here. There it goes, springs in. Shackle is in. And then ball bearing, come on. Ouch. and get back to where we were. Alrighty, so round two, we were successful at getting it back together. I basically did the exact same thing, but I didn't um, move the little tool. That's, that was the problem that I accidentally jostled it this way and it dropped the pins. So this time I made sure to hold it firmly in place. So you can see that our key does work. Shackle stays in. And here is our gut key. And you can see it goes all the way to the 12 o'clock. Obviously, we are not going to gut it anymore because we don't need to. And that, my friends, is how to fix an Allmont rekey. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.